One of the biggest icons in the history of the business. A crossover star who penetrated the mainstream. A lightning rod for controversy who seems determined to get cancelled. Is it really any wonder that Hulk Hogan has a long list of people who have heats with him? Well, it might be a long list, but I don't have all day here, you know, so how about we just narrow it down to a manageable number since we all know how this is going to end anyway. With a big boot, a leg drop, and lots of posing, of course. Because what are you going to do when 10 rest who had heats with Hulk Hogan runs wild on you. Join us. Number 10, Jesse Ventura. Shortly before WrestleMania 2, Jesse Ventura attempted to unionize WWE's locker room in a bid to get better working conditions and compensation for everybody, including once their in-ring careers were over. Most of the boys in the back weren't sold on the idea, believing it needed the support of world champion Hulk Hogan to really work. When the body told the Hulkster about his plan, however, the golden goose went and honked it straight to Vince McMahon. Jesse only found out exactly who ratted him out eight years after the fact, and he was not happy about it given the two had been friends beforehand. Ventura has held a grudge against Hogan ever since, so much so that his overwhelming negativity towards the idea of Hulk joining WCW was a major factor in Eric Bischoff's decision to let the announcer go. Jesse's view on Hogan hasn't softened in the decades since, telling Chris Van Vliet in an August 2024 interview that he will never bury the hatchet with Hogan due to what he considers a major betrayal. Number 9. Bob Backlund Before Hulkamania started running wild, WWE was represented by a very different sort of champion. Prior to losing the world title to transitional champion the Iron Sheik who dropped it to Hogan, Bob Backlund had reigned for years as the clean-cut all-American boy. Backlund prided himself on being a role model to children and wanted to project an image that was family-friendly and virtuous. Hogan also projected this image, but unlike Bob, he didn't exactly practice what he preached. In a 2015 interview, Backlund admitted that he resented Hogan for telling children to take their vitamins and say their prayers, while the man himself had cheated, in Backlund's words, to get and then stay ahead. Backlund said he found it embarrassing that a two-faced person like Hogan had succeeded him and Bruno Sammartino and lambasted Hulk for failing to meet the same standards outside of the ring. Bob stressed that he didn't hate the Hulkster, but that he wouldn't have made him champion on his watch. He also said no to turning heel and having a program with WWE champion Hogan so he didn't disappoint the fans who had stood by him during his own lengthy title reign. Number 8. The Undertaker The Undertaker's first WWE title win should have been an occasion for him to savor, but the dead man had to worry about the fact that he might have injured the company's cash cow in doing so. When Taker hit Hogan with a tombstone pile driver onto a chair at the 1991 Survivor Series, Hulk whispered, Oh, you got me, brother, upon impact, implying that Mark Calloway had dropped him on his head for real before going backstage to seek medical attention. Taker was devastated about it, with some, including the man himself, believing that WWE's decision to have Calloway drop the title back to Hogan six days later was a punishment of sorts. Despite immediately being reassured by Shane McMahon that Hulk's head was nowhere near the mat, it wasn't until Taker himself reviewed the tape prior to their rematch that he realized what the truth was and confronted Hogan about it. Terrible Terry cooked up a story about the Phenom's knees being too tight around his neck while delivering the tombstone, which didn't wash with Taker. Though he was never outright hostile towards Hogan after, Taker knew what he was all about and his radar was on high alert whenever he was around the Hulkster. Number 7. Scott Steiner Big Papa Pump has never been afraid to speak his mind and has in the past launched foul-mouthed tirades in the direction of Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, Diamond Dallas Page, Ric Flair, and many, many more. In 2012, Steiner launched his latest attack via his Twitter page at Hulk Hogan. The genetic freak had choice words, or tweets anyway, for Hogan and Eric Bischoff, accusing the gruesome twosome of ruining TNA, but most of his venom was reserved for the Hulkster. Hogan himself tried to claim that he had lobbied to keep Steiner in the company and then gave an interview saying that Steiner must be unhappy in his life if he's going after him. Yeah, way to go, Terry. I'm sure that'll calm him down. The big bad booty daddy responded by saying that he was gonna knock Hogan and unconscious and that his day was coming. This all ended up playing out in public during WrestleMania 31 weekend, where Steiner was banned from the building for the Hall of Fame ceremony after Hulk's then-wife had called the cops on Steiner following a confrontation at the airport. Hogan wished Steiner well after Scott almost died in 2020, but I reckon there's still one four one and two-thirds chance Freakzilla still wants to maim him. Number 6. Shawn Michaels 
Hulkbusters. When Shawn Michaels agreed to work with Hulk Hogan in the summer of 2005, he believed it was for a three-match series that would see both men work as babyfaces, with the Hulkster ultimately winning two matches to one. As he was prone to do, Hogan played the old creative control card and got things changed up just a little bit. It was now going to just be one match, brother, and Hogan is going over. Oh, and also, you'll have to momentarily turn heel and carry the feud by yourself on TV. See you at SummerSlam, dude! Naturally, this pivot irked Michaels, who had been trying his very best to be a good Christian man about everything when the heartbreak kid of old began to resurface. Not only did Sean take Hulk apart verbally during interviews and segments leading up to the big bouts, but he then entered a legendarily OTT performance in response to Mr. Belay's politicking, overselling everything to the point that the match almost veered into parody territory. In the years since, Michaels has been less than complimentary about Hulk, while Hogan claims Vince McMahon dictated the storyline that he only pulled out of match number two when HBK started acting like a prick. Number five, Bret Hart. Well, if there's something Shawn Michaels can do, Bret Hart can do it better, right? Right? And the hitman's hatred of Hulk Hogan certainly eclipses that of the Heartbreak Kids, with Brett still holding a grudge for something the Hulkster did, or in this case didn't do, over three decades ago. According to Brett, Hogan was scheduled to drop the WWE title to him in the main event of SummerSlam 1993, passing the torch to the excellence of execution as the face of the new generation in the process. Only that didn't work for someone, brother, because Hogan opted to lose the belt to Yokozuna at King of the Ring instead. Dead. Hart claims to have confronted Hogan in the dressing room about the snub and accused him of playing politics to rob him of his crowning moments. Despite this, the two men cleared the air and worked together harmoniously in WCW. However, something has changed since those days and Brett will never miss a chance to take a shot at the man he has dubbed a phony piece of you-know-what. Number 4. Matt Bourne Hogan left WWE after WrestleMania 8 as the heat from the looming steroid scandal, not made any better by Hogan's infamous life field appearance on the Arsenio Hall show had simply gotten two hearts. He returned in the run-up to WrestleMania 9, where he teamed with Brutus Beefcake to defeat Money Inc. before waltzing out later in the show to bag the WWE title from Yokozuna and steal Bret Hart's thunder. According to Matt Bourne, aka the original Doink the Clown, he was supposed to wrestle Hogan at the Showcase of the Immortals. However, the Hulkster didn't much feel like clowning around and put the kibosh on the match. Bourne, presumably bitter at losing out on a bigger WrestleMania payday, held her against the Orange Goblin, though his issues with Hogan weren't limited to just his refusal to work with him. As Matt would explain in later years, he considered Hogan to be an arrogant phony who he found hard to like as a person. Bourne also disliked Hogan for what he supposedly did to Randy Savage. Don't worry, we'll get there soon enough. Number three, Mick Foley. Mick Foley is known as one of pro wrestling's nice guys, and you'll struggle to find anybody within the industry who has a negative thing to say about about him. Well, leave it to the Hulkster to rip on the hardcore legend for no good reason. During an appearance on TSN's Off the Record in 2002, Hogan criticized Foley for not working out as much as he did and for prostituting his body by working a more extreme style. On the same program, months later, a clearly upset Foley responded by saying that he was in good cardiovascular shape when he wrestled, citing long matches with the likes of Shawn Michaels, Steve Austin, and The Rock as evidence. He also called Hogan's comments about him cruel and said that at least fans didn't have to apologize after watching some of his matches. Ouch. Hogan finally apologized to Foley for his comments, almost 22 years after the fact, during an episode of A&E's Most Wanted Treasures, admitting his ignorance and expressing regret for what he said. Now, if we can just get him to do that for the rest of the absolute bollocks he said in public, we would be set. Number two, The Ultimate Warrior. The Ultimate Warrior was supposed to be the heir apparent to Hulk Hogan's WWE throne, with Vince McMahon seeing Jim Helwig's alter ego as the man to take WWE forward in the early 90s. But even a WrestleMania main event victory over the Hulkster, which was supposed to be a passing of the torch, didn't get Warrior to that next level, and it wasn't too long before Hogan was back in the top spot. The two worked together later in WCW, which included a downright disastrous match at Halloween Havoc 98, and were apparently on decent enough terms away from the ring. That said, this all changed following the release of WWE 
WWE's The Self-Destruction of the Ultimate Warrior DVD. As one of the documentary's talking heads, Hogan was shown making disparaging remarks about Warrior, calling him a flash in the pan and insinuating that he had convinced the Iron Sheik to break Warrior's legs for holding McMahon up for money prior to SummerSlam 1991. Warrior's response to these comments came in the form of a venomous, almost hour-long shoot interview while Hogan was deposed for Warrior's lawsuit against WWE relating to the DVD. The two men, quite amazingly, mended fences during WrestleMania 30 weeks end just hours before Warrior passed away. Number 1. Randy Savage Whether as partners or opponents, Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage were simply money together. The Macho Man complimented the Hulkster wonderfully and vice versa, the two men making a boatload of coin together as both friends and foes throughout their careers. The two men were tight behind the scenes until Savage found out that Hulk and his then-wife Linda were harboring his estranged wife Elizabeth as she pursued a relationship with another man. After that, Randy held a grudge against his former Mega Powers running buddy, though they continued to work together without incident in WCW during the mid to late 90s. But after Savage left the company for good in 2000, he embarked on the big I Hate Hulk Hogan tour. He incessantly ran down Terry Bollea in interviews, challenged him to fights, even recorded a goddamn diss track about him on his album, a thing we must always remember actually happened. The two momentarily crossed paths backstage at TNA's 2004 video. Victory Road pay-per-view and almost came to blows before things cooled down and Savage retired from the spotlight. A chance meeting in a doctor's office saw the two men finally reconcile just months before Randy's passing in 2011. Well, according to Hogan anyway, so take that with 24 inches of salt, brother!